my name, say my name. Da 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 Say my name, say my name. Mm. Beautiful night. <clears throat> oh, hey, everybody. So off to the Soul of the Jones show. I'm heat. It is the evening edition. Baby. <sighs> it's beautiful out here. It's a balmy 65 to 69 degrees out here. In the park. Uh, walking in the park, waiting for you to come on in. Hey, I want to talk about something. I want to talk about, say my name, say my name. Yeah. You're like, what that mean? What that's all about? Well, this ain't no sexual show. No, we ain't talking about that. Mm-mm. We ain't talking about that. I'm talking about... Uh, Whispering or saying someone's name or thinking about their name and what it do to your psyche. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to say about this one. I have no idea what I'm going to say. But I do know that I have fallen in love before. And the mere thought of her name drove me crazy. Hey, Laureline. You're here. The mere thought of her name, the mere mention of her name drove me wild. Anybody? Anybody out there know what I'm talking about? Any of you ladies out there know what I'm talking about? Just to see that person's name written on a piece of paper did something to you, your mind. It might have done something to you physiologically as well. Mm -hmm. Just to see that person sign on Facebook, to see a post from them, to see a DM, to see an inbox from them, just the mere mention of their name does something to you. Why? Because of their relationship that you have with them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Folk on their way to, I don't know, where y'all going to Miami? Where y'all going? I can take that plane in my hand later. Later, I'm just pushing that plane out the way. Just push it out the way. Yeah, it's a full moon tonight. Today, at the time of this recording, is about October. I don't know, third or fourth. I can't keep up. It's a beautiful night. This is probably the last summerish night that we're gonna have in Chicago for a little while. Yeah, but I wanna bring up. Romeo and Juliet. Yeah. Can I talk about them for a minute? Because that was a question that was asked in that beautiful Shakespearean play. It got me thinking. See, y'all can't smell what I smell, but I, I smell I smell like they're doing fall stuff out here. And one of these days, social media is going to catch up with the scents in some of y'all's rooms. Maybe not. So, yep. Is it wrong to ask where your Kojic, like, <laughs> baby, so, <laughs> what, what, Mary, is it, is it wrong to a ask where, where your Kojic license, 2017, maybe so one said some bad about 30 later, I'm not understanding what you're saying, Brad Small, <laughs> what are you saying, <laughs> who's asking about my license, um, yeah, I'm going to sit on this bench and talk about Shakespeare. I'm going to talk about Shakespeare until I can figure out uh, what Mary uh, Pratt's, Pratt Small is talking about here. Okay? Uh, yeah, because if y'all want to see my license, I can photocopy it and send it to y'all. That's my passion. Pastor, maybe he can give you a copy. I don't know. Yeah, Romeo Montague and Juliet Capulet. Y'all remember the story? Meet and fall in love in Shakespeare's lyrical tale of star-crossed lovers. Yeah, they're doomed from the start as members of two warring families. 
Hmm? Maybe some some spoke ill of, of 30 later, not sure. Oh, okay, I'm still not, I'm not understanding. <laughs> I'm not sure what you mean, Mary. Um, here Juliet tells Romeo that a name is an artificial and meaningless convention and that she loves the person who's called Montague. Not the Montague name and not the Montague family. Romeo, out of his passion for Juliet, rejects his family's name and vows, as Juliet asks, to deny his father and instead be new, baptized as Juliet's lover. Okay? This one short line encapsulates the central struggle and tragedy of the play and is one of Shakespeare's most famous quotes. And I'm going to quote it. Okay? Yeah, you're typing really fast, Mary. Yeah, you're typing really fast, so I'm not, not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. What are you talking about? Okay. Uh, it says here, now this is Juliet. Juliet says, Oh, Romeo. Now, I don't know what part of the world she's from, but I'm going to just make up uh, an accent. Oh, Romeo. Romeo. Wherefore how thou, Romeo, mm -hmm. deny thy father and refuse thy name, or, if thou wilt not, be but sworn, my love, and I'll no longer be a Capulet. Okay, and then Romeo, mm -hmm. aside, shall I hear more, or shall I speak at this? This is uh, Romeo's, mm -hmm. and then Juliet says this, here it is, you ready for it? Julia says, "'Tis but thy name that is mine enemy. Thou art thyself, though not a Montague. What's Montague? It is no hand, no feet, no arm, no face, nor any part belonging to a man, or be some other name. Mm -hmm. What's in a name? That which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. So, Romeo would, were he not Romeo called, retain that dear perfection which he owes without that title, Romeo, doth thy name, and for the name which is no part of thee, take all myself. Huh. That's from Italy, I believe. And then Romeo says, I take thee and thy word. You know, he had to do that here. I take thee that thy heard, and he, he had a mustache and went like that. Okay, yeah, yeah. Call me but love, and I will be new baptized. Henceforth, I never will be Romeo. Come to me to the cause. Uh, mm -hmm. Your eyes are like limpid pools. Mm -hmm. I, I swim in them. I'm telling you. This is a beautiful play, beautiful words, and how could we, how could we possibly interpret what's going on here? Mm -hmm. We can interpret this a couple ways. Number one, there are people out there who are in love, and it is forbidden fruit. It's not forbidden by the both of them, it's forbidden by their family members, their children, it might be forbidden by their religion. It might be forbidden by their political view. You see, um, I remember when Barack Obama, the dear president of ours for eight years, um, a, a, a hurricane hit the, the northern eastern part of the United States. Over there in the area of New York and Jersey. I don't know if y'all remember that. Was it last year or the year before last? Okay. And Chris Christie was the governor at the time. I think he still is. And the the news followed. The cameras followed the president. How you doing? The the news followed the president, and they filmed Chris Christie hugging Barack Obama. 
firestorm happened. I know, Anthony, I'm early because it was such a beautiful daylight and the sun was dropping real fast. I was like, let me catch it before it dropped all the way out. Well, it's gone now. And the Republicans got upset because a Democrat president was hugging a Republican governor. And Christie spent all that year defending why the embrace. And I says, what an amazing division we have. Good evening, Leslie. <clears throat> These were the Montagues and the Capulets. You're not to fraternize with the enemy, even though we all are supposed to be one nation under God. E unibus plurus, plurum, I think it's called, out of many one. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, there are those who are in the church of God and Christ. Back in the day, during the time of the great C.H. Mason, the founder, and I remember reading a book from the 1930s. My parents brought this book home from a convention one day, and in the minutes of that convention, it says, come to order we the first thing on our list is to find out what are we going to do with pastor jackson because pastor jackson got married to a baptist woman and we want to know from the board what are we going to do with him yes you see you got to understand it was a different world back then Yes, it was. Back then, it was Jim Crow, so it was, it was just natural. It was a thing to do to hate black folks. It was a thing to do to not allow them to drink out of the same faucet, eat at the same diner, you know, and sleep in the same hotel. That's just the way of life it was, and both parties just had to accept it. That's just the way it was. It seems strange today, but back then, that was, that was the climate. And back then, in religion, we were segregated within segregation, meaning... We couldn't go to certain white towns, but we also, if within black folk, could not even fellowship with each other if we were of a different religious denomination. So, you were considered unequally yoked if you was a if you was a Church of God in Christ man, and you married or start dating or fell in love with a Baptist woman. And if you was a pastor, they might have taken your license. Mm -hmm. Yep. Art said, and some say nothing has changed. Nothing really has changed. You just, you just have to look at it in the masses. All right? Montague and Capulet, that hasn't changed. Today, we have relationships that are forbidden. How are they forbidden? Let's talk about some of the forbidden relationships. Maybe some of you can mention them down here. Two people fall in love. One man is 50. But the woman that he's in love with is 29. I walk. So they look at him as robbing the cradle. It's a forbidden relationship. But in essence, really, she robbing the cradle. Because he's closer to reverting back to baby to a baby than she is. You understand what I'm saying? Before you know it, she gonna have to change his diaper. <laughs> yes, I said it. Yeah. And that's right, Art. She grown, but forbidden. In the eyes of those who look at that as being nasty. So, in many cases, these relationships gotta hide. You see, sometimes I counsel people and I tell them, you might want to keep your relationship private for now. Because I've, I've had to do that. When women hear private, what they hear is secret. Yeah. See, when a woman hears private, her interpretation is, you're hiding me. You're ashamed of me. Or uh, you want to uh, go out and date others and keep me at bay until you make up your mind if you ever do. I ain't crazy. You see, 
So a lot of times when I tell pe people, y'all may have to be private, then I have to talk to the woman in detail because the man know what I'm talking about. It means because of your situation right now, <laughs> Angela said, here we go. <laughs> because of your situation right now, the both of y'all, you can't go public with yours right now. It's not time because of your special situation. See, when I see this, the masses of women say, we shouldn't be doing that, y'all, why? No, I said, their situation ain't yours. Get your boo and stand on top of the rooftop and y'all proclaim y'all love each other. But these two right here are the Montagues and the Capulets. They can't do that right now. What's in the name? Yeah. Yes, sir. Vancha, I'm trying, man, I'm trying. You better keep folk out of your business and do it in the most wise way possible. Here's why. Ladies, I don't want to rebuke you, but sometimes it sounds like a rebuke and you're just going to have to say ouch and move on with your life. What happens is sometimes when women fall in love with men, you want to be a clarion call. You want to tell everybody right away. You want to tell the world. You want to tell YouTube, Facebook, and you even want to go over there to MySpace, recreate your account, and tell all your MySpace face buddies. <laughs> Guess what? Me and Bobo Jackson are together. I get the feeling. I get the feeling. Uh, I understand. Mm -hmm. uh, here's the problem, though. You didn't do your investigative report. It's not so much that the man is jacked up. That ain't always the case, because in many cases he is. And some of the men are so jacked up, you don't know he is. And then when you found out he's jacked up, you just advertised your relationship to 6,000 people. Now, how are you going to face them? Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, come on, understand. I understand. I do. I'm trying to tell y'all on social media, especially these singles groups, here's what I saw. All right. Y'all ready for this? Because many of us are in these singles groups. All right. Singles join these groups or we got placed in them without our control so we figured well I'm in it I might as well go talking to somebody and we go talking to each other on the wall and then the wall turn into the inbox in there about the land mm -hmm. and then the inbox turns into invite over either to my city or your city been there about the farm mm -hmm. and then y'all go out have a great time and then somebody decide that this relationship has been established it's usually not the man it's usually her she has established that relationship yes she did yes she did she may not tell him but she sure is showing him yes she is and She's talking to her sisters, her best friends, and her associates behind his back about their relationship. Yes, she is. You see, it's okay for a woman to have a confidant, one. It's okay. But you better you better make sure who that confidant is, because that confidant might be your confidant, but to the world, she is a yappity, yappity, yappity. Yes. She's a, she's a Yoda. She's a... She one of those. <laughs> Every time she opened her mouth, it's like she just, yeah. She's a, she's that horn. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to tell you, Tina, MySpace. Come on, all right. So y'all established that. So in these Facebook groups, I see pictures. Or hey, y'all, I mean, I fell in love. Okay, sometimes his name pop up, sometimes it don't, but here he is. And then I see y'all's pictures together going out. Sometimes he don't even know it because he's not even, sometimes he's not even in y'all's group. All right, sometimes, all right. Y'all, but y'all splash all in the Facebook groups. Look at me, look at me. Something happens in that relationship. Unfortunately, somebody made a decision that this ain't going to work. You just spent three to six months splashing y'all's beautiful selves on the wall. 
Yeah. That's why they say waiting in the, Yep. Mm-hmm. On the wall. Now, before you know it, that six months of splashing your relationship on the wall, two, three weeks go by and we see no pictures of y'all. Now the people are wondering. All the pictures we saw of y'all in all of those pictures in Facebook, they mysteriously disappeared. <laughs> Loretta, they're gone. We're looking. We're like, what happened to... Where they at? Hmm. They gone. Okay. Uh, and now... We don't know how to approach this situation. You see, we you let us in y'all's relationship. We became a party. We became a part. You pushed us into y'all relationship and now y'all owe us an answer. Yes, you do. You forced us to enjoy y'all's enjoyment. And now y'all going to break up privately and don't tell us? Oh, we family now. You owe us. And we family don't know how to ask you, uh, what happened to him? Oh, uh, well, well, it's a long story. No, well, we got time. Tell us the story because you made us a part of your relationship. You see, this stuff happens on social media too much. And if it ain't on social media, I see it even in person. Yo, you bring him or her to every one of your events. Every time you turn around, y'all together. Y'all together. And uh, uh, you came up with the conclusion on what the relationship is. He didn't. Yeah. Come on. Some families are closer than others. Yep. Now, here's what's happening. Now... Uh, the girl's family members mama, daddy, sisters maybe even brother is falling in love with this man like a family but yet y'all are breaking up guess what's getting ready to happen y'all want me to tell y'all what's getting ready to happen <laughs> well Yolanda says I got time until it's the third or fourth dude that I excuse myself from <laughs> wanting to know here's what's getting ready to happen all right. Your family and fell in love with this man. Now y'all separated, but the family ain't separating from him. He still get invited to Thanksgiving, Christmas, birthdays, anniversaries, church services. Yeah, he do. Family reunions. Mama got sick. Guess who shows up at the hospital while you there? crying over your mama, guess who show up too? Yeah. You see? And your family say, well, well, you brought us into this. He family now. We can't help it because y'all broke up. Ask me how I know this. Ask me how I know this. Why? I told y'all, this needs to be private. You don't need to be introducing him to mama just yet. Don't do it. Don't do it. If anything, wait till he invites you to meet mama and daddy. But until then, I ain't talking to all y'all. Some of y'all in some great relationships, y'all dating. But some of y'all, and you know who you are, you jumped the gun, went out there. Now you're embarrassed to tell the people when every time they ask you how the relationship is, you're like, uh, it's complicated. And then you even put that on Facebook. Your, your relationship went from single to dating it's complicated it's complicated can only mean one thing uh, uh, Houston we got a problem mm -hmm. yes I see that in the family ex-husbands and wives yep girlfriends and boyfriends drop by for plates come on I'm trying you know, let me tell you let me tell you my ex every now and then shows up you understand what I'm saying I don't forbid her from doing that because it's, it, it's difficult for me to tell someone you can't be in love with my family. It's, it's inappropriate, I think, to tell my mama you can't invite. It's inappropriate. But sometimes I have to tell them, listen, 
I want some peace. I just, can't I just enjoy y'all without you asking me to show my baggage? I mean, I, can I just enjoy some family time where we all got the same last name? She changed her name. So can can we just, can I just pick one day out of the year where all the family come together and it's just me and my family? <laughs> Any other day, you can invite her all you want to. Y'all can stay all night. I might even show up. But this one right here, can we just, can we all just get along? Yeah, yeah. They make me tired with it. I get confused at the, at the family functions and come on, Yolanda, you, you, you know, you, you all right with me. You're getting brownie points. When it's over, it's over, Loretta Johnson said. You would think that would be it, right? But our parents keep falling in love with the, our dates. So what's the remedy? Stop inviting them. <laughs> Stop inviting them to, to meet the parents. Until y'all absolutely know. Okay, I think it's time. You see, chivalry ain't dead. Whatever happened to waiting? Take your time. Get to know each other. And when you at home by yourself, uh, do a credit report. Background check. Unless he told you what's going on. Then when you do your background check, you ain't surprised. <laughs> Oops. He a what? He, a, he been a pedophile since the age of 19? <laughs> what? He ain't told me that. Yeah, yeah, it, it's time for you to do that. See, because if a man ain't got nothing to hide, he'll sit there on the computer with you and say, okay, let me show you my life. Here's my life, okay? Nah, he ain't got to show you your, his financial records and all like that. No, that, that ain't y'all's business right now. No, y'all just dating. But if he's trying to take you to another level deeper than just dating, it's time for the brother to come clean. He need to tell you some stuff. I have six kids. You see three, but I have three more. You see what I'm saying? He should say that. I got three more. One is in Afghanistan because I was in tour over there. And then in Iraq, I got one over there because I was in tour over there. And then I took a vacation to Bangladesh and I got one over there. Yeah. Ronnie, Bobby, and Mickey. You know my son Mike, right? Mm -hmm. And then you know my other family, Tito, Michael, and Jermaine. Yeah, Janet's the baby. Mm -hmm. Okay, he should tell you that stuff. Women, you should tell them too. You should let them know. Some, some things that shouldn't stay private because it may affect y'all if y'all do get married. You need to be open and front with each other. If you think that this is getting ready to happen, tell them some stuff. You may have to drip some stuff lightly because y'all might break up but there's something you can say right now. There is some things. You determine what that is. Yep. Uh, did I say Mike, Karen? I might have missed Mike. If, if I did, it's too bad. Let, let's pray. M Mike's gone. Mike, Mike, Mike's been kicked out the family. <laughs> yeah. Art say uh, some of these background checks are bogus and, and taint perception and it lingers even after proven wrong. Art, if you're sitting with her in front of the computer, you can explain it yourself. She ain't got to find out by herself. Sit with her. Tell her your life story. Said that one right there, that's a lie and I can prove it. All right. Yolanda says, yes, he will be up front. Elusive and evasive men frighten me. <laughs> Yolanda, it's a Yolanda Tezeno show. Yes, yeah, good stuff. Okay. All right. So I just want y'all to know this. I didn't want to be long here. I just talked for two hours. And uh, I just want to do like a 30-something minutes on this and let y'all know, you know, some of y'all are the Montagues and the Capulets. And sometimes you just going to have to keep your stuff private. Enjoy yourself. Go to the movies, all right? So what? There are people around there. Who cares? They just, they don't know how serious y'all are. Go to the movies. Go out to some cute little restaurants. Go walking in the park. Go driving around the city. Stuff like that. And enjoy your youth. Youth or your old self, okay? Enjoy yourself together. Get to know each other. Say nothing to nobody. Don't tell folk you're going out. It's date night. And y'all put posts on there on your Facebook. It's date night. Now everybody want to know, okay, what date is this and what's his name? And you ain't got to put all that up there. No. Don't even be checking in saying I'm at the yada yada theater with boo boo or whatever. Don't even check in. Don't do none of that. 
just go out and leave the world alone. What was you doing before social media? Was you picking up your phone and calling the folks and say, hey, I'm out with Boo Boo, I'm out with Bo- Bojangles, I'm out, okay, click uh, and pick up the other phone and call somebody else. But that's what y'all doing on social media. You're pretty much doing that. Why everybody got to know y'all going out? Unless y'all are engaged or married, ain't nobody's business but y'all's. And enjoy it because you know how wonderful it feels when ain't nobody in your business and they didn't know what y'all was doing. And you go home and sleep good tonight and got to worry about waking up in the morning with some scandal <laughs> in your inbox or on your wall or something like that. Because folk done found out. Or just, it's a great feeling. It's a great feeling to be able to have one place, one person you can talk to and go to and go out somewhere and enjoy it stress-free and your parents and brothers and sisters and cousins ain't got to be calling you and saying, oh, where were you? None of your business. Well, who was you with? It's none. It's learnt of yours. You mind yours. Sweep around thine own front door. As the book of Sir Walter chapter 4. Sweep around thine own front door. Before thine sleep. Uh, sweep around the hithers. Okay. Thither or thy. I can't remember. I can't remember which version I was using. Sir Walter Jones King. Was the I'm Sir. So it, I, it, there's a King Jane version. There's a Sir Walter version. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just let us enjoy ourselves and we go home and say, thank God, I'm still saved today. Yes. Come on. And my, grand, my grandma taught me well, study to be quiet, be private, love it. Your grandma your grand, uh, was the greatest. <laughs> come on. Uh, ain't nobody's business. For seven years, Mary now, come on, Laureline, come on. I'm telling you, your marriage is going to last long. Even in marriage, there's just a lot of things you don't need to be telling everybody. You just don't need to be telling folk. Don't need to know. They don't need to know nothing unless they're coming to you for marital advice and things like that. And then you can tell them some things, get the permission of your husband or your wife, and you tell them. You both tell them some things that might help them. Other than that, shut your mouth, sis. Shut it. Be quick to shut up. That's really what the Bible really tried to say, but the Bible was trying to be, you know, using grace and. The Bible was just trying not to offend you that much. So, but what it really said is, "Be quick to shut your big mouth." That's what that's what the book of the book of James really said. When you interpret it properly, I'm a scholar. It says, <clears throat> "Brethren, uh, the the tongue, it's a, it's an it's an unruly evil. Mm-hmm. Who who can know it? It, it, it? You can't tame it. You can you can take." Uh, the, the, a bit, put it in the horse's mouth and turn it uh, left and right. The the captain of the ship and take the helm and turn it as he lifteth. That's what the scripture says. That big old ship, the love boat, Captain Stupid, can turn that thing left and right. All but the tongue. It's a deadly poison and unruly evil. That's what he said about the tongue. Yeah, you can't tame it. Just can't do it. It's fire. So the Bible says, be quick to shut your big mouth. That's what it said. You read it for yourself. Go ahead. It's in there somewhere. Be quick. Shut your mouth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, watch how peaceful your days will be from that moment on. Bridle your tongue and go out with your boo and have a great time and come home uh, and just say, well, thank God, I'm scandal free. It's going to help you. You see, Romeo and Juliet had a problem. They both were in love, but they was forbidden. Two families, two rival fa- families. It was like the McCoys and the, the it, Art, what is it? The Hat, Hatfields and the McCoys? Was that the rival family in the South? they still fighting today. It's the fight with, uh, it's, it's the Jacob and Esau fight. Do y'all not know that? Still fighting today. It's the Ishmael uh, fighting. Okay? Yeah. Just enjoy each other's fine-looking selves. 
get a little kiss around around here. You kiss right here too. Y'all heard my show on the Song of Solomon. I don't care how y'all deep folks. I don't care what y'all say. Kiss. Enjoy your kiss and go home. And say, scandal free. Get your t-shirt. Small, medium, large, extra large, whatever your body size is, get a shirt to say scandal free. And then put the website on the back, scandalfree.com. Mm-hmm. And enjoy your life, boo-boo. I'm telling you, you're going to live a long time, you're going to stay young, and you're going to die with a smile on your face. You're going to be in the coffin, like this. You're hanging around like this. Open casket, like this. Think of like, think of like, um, why he, why he smiling in the casket, like this? Because he, he lived a scandal-free life. Yeah, but couldn't the undertaker do something with, couldn't he wipe the smile off his face? No. No, in his will, it, it just say, don't, it say, don't resuscitate and don't touch his face. That's, that's the way he, he like that. And, and while he in the grave, he, he like that. Waiting on Jesus to come. He just, his eyes is just wide open. He just smiled. He just, he, he, he's scandal free. And when they dig him up 40 years from now, because uh, they were suspicious that he might have went out that night and they don't have any proof. Now dig him up his bones and his skeleton. The teeth going to be up like that. He going to be smiling. He like, he like that. 40 years from now, he just... He, his face gone. It's just it's a skull. But it, it's going to be like that. He's going to be smiling like this. And like, we never seen bones like this. That, what, what, Why was he smiling in the grave? Well... Go back to his life story 40 years ago. And he just, and, they, and it's the t-shirt was left in, in the tomb. And it say, scandal free, scandalfree.com. I'm telling y'all, it's gonna be great. Y'all, <laughs> Karen, I'm trying to tell y'all, it's gonna be the greatest life and afterlife you ever had in your life. And when the rapture come, you're gonna be, you're gonna be going up, you're gonna be going up in heaven like this. You're like that. Just, just rising up in the heavens. Yep. And you're gonna see Christ's face. Christ's gonna be like, my why are you smiling? Huh? Why why are you smiling? I don't you know? <laughs> Alright. I gotta get out of here. Okay? I hope that helps some of y'all. And if it didn't help any of y'all, y'all got problems. Go get some counseling. Okay? Uh, 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 seek God. Tell God. Uh, er erase my scandalous life because I keep telling everybody my business and I have no peace at home. Mm -hmm. No peace. That's, that's two kinds of peace. Well, this is romance in the park. What do you expect? All right. I I I I'm going to go home now. See about my dog and some putting some food in my belly and do some paperwork and mind my own business. Yeah. You know, you know how many bones and muscles it takes to smile? Not that many. It takes a whole lot of structure and force to frown. But when you smile, ah, oh, it's relaxing, ain't it? Ah, oh, it's just beautiful. So that's the way I feel when I go home. I was like, ah, my day is over. Ah, just stress-free. No scandal. Mm. It feels good. <laughs> I love y'all. Hit the share button if you can. If you're on YouTube, you know what to do. Look up for my book. Romance in the Park. All right? Bye-bye.